Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Time to Roll's Campaign 1. This is episode 67, I believe, uh, going by my count. Um, we don't have any announcements other than the fact that last week, I'm sorry I had to cancel last second. Uh, I got some news that I can't share right now, nor should I, or I'm probably, I'm probably not going to share it ever. Uh, but just know that it, in one fell swoop, uh, my entire family's life changed last week, so it's it's just a life a life changing event that just fucked up my entire night, and I just didn't have the energy nor the want to do anything other than just kind of be focused on what that was. So um, can't really say much about it, and I probably never will. Um, the people that need to know do know, and uh, the people that will that will need to know, will know eventually, but I can't share it on the internet, and that's we're just going to leave it at that, but just know that uh, there is going to be a chance in the next three months to six months that I will have to cancel uh, just because of that, those issues. Um, but, you know, I hopefully will be able to keep everything on on schedule and ready to go. But I mean, like I said, it, things changed very fast and out of nowhere, uh, and with my family. So it's uh, everything's everything. Uh, I could say everybody's alive, which is good, but it's not good, not good in the slightest for everything else. But um, but yeah. Anyways, getting past that uh, when being vague. Um, where the heck did my other dice go? I don't know where I put those. Um, I guess I'll use my Lord of the Rings dice tonight. Because I haven't used those in a while. And, uh, go from there. So, anyways, uh, let's get right into it. I know we're running late, uh, but Austin's running late and Lexi's running late. Lexi's not going to be totally in it tonight since she has been dealing with some really shitty work schedules so she's she's gonna try to be available but you know how it is um there all right i got dice out that's a good thing but let's get into it we're gonna hop right into bingo's little self set of discovery we're gonna go over a recap and we're gonna we'll go from there um i need to switch to a different map and round up and isn't that in New York? <laughs> well, no, he's he's they they think he's in the Renaissance Tower. They think he might be. Uh, there's a junkyard in New Jersey, where they think he's buried, and then. Um, I thought it was under uh, Giant Stadium. Yeah, under the. Uh, the giant well that was another one under the giant stadium in the end zone then there's also a, a trash company that's in new jersey and then there was a property up in michigan that they thought he was at um a lot of people think he's in the renaissance what the fuck did i just walk into we the resistance <laughs> refuse to be brought down Probably um, the tamest conversation you could have walked into. Honestly, <laughs> fair. I personally think they put him in a pond and he was eaten by an alligator. Was it Chance the Snapper? It was Chance the Snapper. Did you just say that out loud? Do you not well, know who bless, you, whoever, <laughs> bless you, whoever that was. Yeah. That was yeah. That was, <laughs> that was, that was, that was impressive. That was visceral. He's, he, for someone who doesn't have children, he has such a dad sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very dad sneeze, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get into it because uh, I got a message from Austin saying he's going to be a lot later than he expected. There it is again. Hey, um, oh, you're a trash company. <laughs> okay, a little bit of recap because uh, it's been two weeks. Sorry about having to skip out last week. Um, you should be. But, uh, we yeah. played last week. No, we didn't. <laughs> we did okay. not. Not here. Uh, okay. Let me see here. 
All right, so uh, for a little recap, and then we'll get right into uh, uh, Vivra's little adventure that he's going to be going on Yeehaw. by himself. Um, so la last we left off, uh, you, the Rat Bastards, uh, found your way to the Deeper Vault. Uh, you were told uh, you were told to wait. Uh, either wait to get permission to go in or find a way in yourself. As you wandered up, Zane recalled because of a really fucking high intelligence save, which I think, or intelligence check, which cool. I think was a natural 20. Um, it was pretty damn close. Uh, ended up prompting him remembering that uh, in, order, in order to enter into the deeper vaults, uh, you, need to, you needed to give up one of your deepest, darkest secrets. Uh, after going through a bit of a bit of some moments of deepest, darkest secret sharing among the group, all all of you casually watched your friends disappear in front of your eyes, dis uh, and disapparating as if they never existed. Uh, after all of you eventually made your way in, and some interesting truths being shared by some certain individuals that. Uh, decided to wait before everybody else was gone. Um, you uh, you all found yourself in your own little, what could be described as trials, these chambers of self-doubt and uh, self-discovery. Uh, some of you reliving um, past experiences, some of you finding more about your finding more out about yourself than you really ever wanted to. Uh, and as uh, Vivra, uh, you were second to last to go in and say a truth. Um, so I I came up with a placeholder thing that sent you off for, for plot purposes because you weren't able to make it that session. But is there anything you that Vivra would say that only Beep would hear? Okay, to be so that, I was to, second to last. Yeah, Beep was last. You were second to last. Ooh. So okay, the only okay, person the, the only person who would hear anything would be beep. Okay, which sucks so that Austin isn't here beep. right now, but you know. Yeah, um, here I'll even uh, type it out in Discord form as I say it. Okay. Um, do, do, do. Unless that thing popping in. Oh no. Okay. Um, where the heck is he so I can message him while I am. Typing. All right, I can't find it, and it's too hard on the trying to go with one uh, monitor right now. Um, I could type. So it I'll out look to right. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, I'll look beep right in the eye, and uh, in common, because I was going to do it in draconic. Um, but in common, I will say, uh, this one believes this one doomed his previous tribe when he left. Oh, he's here. How's that for timing? <laughs> get, get get ready. You're getting a you're getting a Weaver lore dump. Just you. I am? Just you. What? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, yep. Hold on. I'm hopping into roll twenty. <laughs> yeah. Give me a second. Uh. So a little, little just to, just to catch you up, we're we're going back before you and Weaver disappeared into the deeper vaults. So this was oh, this was v okay. Vivra's truth that he that you only you would have heard as beep. Okay. Okay. Um, the timing was so, impeccable, oh, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, I will look you dead in the eye and say, uh, "This one believes he has doomed his former tribe when he left." This one enjoys that thought and would do it again if he had the chance. And you watch Vivra disappear. And then you said you're, you're a piece, which we're not going to go back over. But uh, we, so this is going to be Weaver time for probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So uh, sorry. Sorry to everybody else. But, you know, got to catch him up. Um, Weaver, you find yourself spiraling through a mess of magical uh weaves of just you see multiple colors flashing in front of you you see the occasional green shoot by that shoots by that that feels warm and inviting 
uh, and eventually you 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 blink your eyes and you're standing in a what you feel under your feet is sand um but around you are vines and when you look up with your passive perception and the fact that you have your dark vision goggles you look up and it's a stone ceiling but if the walls are covered in vines and the floor feels sand like as you look down it's not the regular color of sand it feels more earthy i mean in a way that it almost feels like grounded up stone instead of like actual sand and you look around and there's no discernible features about this room but you do see standing about a hundred feet away from you down this long vine covered corridor a little tiny sprite of a flame floating in the darkness just outside of your view okay um i will take a quick glance around make sure that i'm not catching in or not missing anything okay. um but um, then make a, I will... make a perception check then if you want to if you want to try to discern any more any defined features 27 you look around and you being a druid you having a intense connection with nature you can almost sense that these vines aren't natural in the way that they're naturally grown they didn't grow out of the normal water cycle and plant growth these vines seem like they were artificially made by some sort of magical force and you begin to look closer and just try to peer through them the vines are too thick to see the wall but your assumption is that probably behind those vines is stone as you look down sifting through what looks to be sand you see bones you see human bones you see a dragonborn skull behind you and it quickly dawns on you that you are not the first person to ever come into this chamber and you know for sure that you definitely have you know for sure that these two these two individuals definitely never made it out but you do see that mm -hmm. th that little floating ball of fire it's just like a little spirit floating 100 feet away and it's just kind of staying in one little spot just hovering and kind of bobbing up and down in the air okay uh i will go ahead and produce flame um you go to produce and flame just hold it in my hand nothing Oh, there's no magic. Interesting. Coming from your, you cannot produce flame. I will look very confused for a second. I will grab my spear, um, and then I will make my way towards that bright. Okay. As you get closer, this little what seemed to be a little sprite of a fire of a flame flickering in the middle of of this room starts to get bigger and bigger as you walk closer to it. And then you blink your eyes and it gets smaller again. You look around and it's almost as if you didn't move. You didn't take any steps. You look down, you see the same bones, the same skull of the dragonborn. And you kind of shake your head and you look around and there's just, it's like you didn't take any steps. What do you want to do? Um, hmm. I would like to go ahead and grab, at least try to grab one of the skulls, probably the Dragonborn skull. You're going to go for the Dragonborn skull. Okay, you bend down to grab the Dragonborn skull. Make a strength check. Just strength. Ten. <laughs> That was a DC. Yeah. That that was that was a DC. Uh, you go to okay. pick up the skull, and attached to the skull, you feel you feel a pop, and you realize that the spinal column is still attached. Was still attached to this skull as you went to go pick it up, and as you grabbed it, it 
being brittle, it just kind of snapped away. And as you look at the skull, with your best estimation, and, and just given your your general the general facade you put up with knowing how nature works and some of it not even being a facade, just, just overall experience. And with a 23 medicine check, uh, <laughs> which I was going to literally about to ask you for, um, you can tell that this skull is probably every bit of a hundred to 200 years old. Like the, the DK that has set over the, uh, the bone of the skull, the, the enamel has eroded away there's no flesh it's just it almost feels like a piece of stone in your hand mm. but it's dragonborn um, skull nothing nothing too interesting about it it's just it's a big it's a big dragon like skull that looks to be on the set the shoulders of a humanoid instead of an actual dragon okay um I will go ahead and make another attempt to uh, walk towards the um, glowing entity carrying the skull. Okay. So you go take a step and immediately you feel drawn to drop the skull. It's almost as if it's a second nature thing. Just you feel like you need to drop this skull. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Twenty-two. You feel compelled, and you push through with the will that you have, and just kind of the um, the overall interest in trying to find your way towards this flame. You push through, and you take a step, and another step, and the flame is starting to get closer. But instead of getting larger, it's staying the same. But you could tell you're getting closer because the bones on the ground are no longer there. However, you do feel this weird sensation underneath your feet. It's almost as if the sand is moving itself. It's almost as if it's breathing as you continue to walk. Uh, can I snap off one of the vertebrae? So I mean, with the spines. Is, did I pull the spine with the skull, or did I just uh, pull the skull? The skull. The skull snapped. This. That's what the strength check was for. So as you picked it up, okay. it snapped off. the the skull the the spine seemed to be buried underneath the sand, or stone okay. dust or whatever um, this is. Yeah, can I pull a tooth out of the skull? Yeah, uh, with relative ease, uh, with your strength, um, you 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 pluck just pulling kind of really hard. It does snap a little bit, but you do get a. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to immediately drop it and watch the tooth. Okay. The tooth. Uh, is it like moving back on its own type of thing? The tooth hits the ground and you see it like settle into the, the what looks to be the sand. And then you notice it move forward, like in front of you, away from you, and then draws back into the point that you dropped it at and then it moves forward and then back it's almost as if this is breathing the sand is moving at almost intervals of breaths <laughs> okay um i'm gonna try to kind of time out my movements move forward when um like the the tooth moves forward a bit and then um stop wait for a second and then forward again Kind of just in intervals, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so you do that, and you do find yourself starting to move forward at a quicker pace than you anticipated, because the sand is moving your feet. You do not feel a hard bottom underneath your feet. You feel like you're standing in a pile of... You feel like you're in the desert, uh, where the sand compacts underneath your feet instead of actually finding a true hard bottom uh, of, mm -hmm. of what like a dirt or, or a stone would provide and on every what seems to be a breath in and you walk you get closer and closer to this flame eventually to the point where you find yourself face to face 
with this like little floating sprite of a flame and it's it's just there in front of you uh i will try to produce my own flame again nothing then i'm gonna go ahead and reach out and try to touch this floating flame okay um make an acrobatics check because as you go to grab the flame it flips away from your hand and dash it yeah uh unfortunately as you go to grab it you you grab it and you stumble a little bit and you, you kind of gather yourself but then when you look up you are 15 feet away from this flame feeling yourself being dragged back by this breath like movement okay um i'm gonna keep um kind of in the same vein i'm gonna keep uh you know, walking forward as the exhales or inhales or whatever. Okay. So, you get back to the flame, uh, and it's just there, floating again. Not seeming to move, it just kind of stays where it's at, bobbing up and down right in one space. Um... I will go ahead and I'll turn my spear around or kind of not like aggressively poke it, but kind of like offer the haft of my spear towards the flame. Okay. Um, so you're not trying to attack the flame. You're just trying to interact with Correct. it with your spear. Okay. Uh, for, th for that case, I'm going to need you to make a, we'll say an attack roll, but not with intent to injure. So make an attack roll using your spear. Come on. 14. As you go to lunge the spear forward, you're able to touch the flame. And as you touch the flame, you see the metal of, of the tip of your spear start to grow into a hot red and then eventually an orange and then eventually a yellow, and it starts heating up brightly as if it's been stuck into a forge. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull it back. And that was the, the back end of the spear, correct, that I used? Oh, sorry. You're using the, the actual wooden part, right? Or the, you, the butt of the spear. Uh, are you... I think it is metal because this is the spear that I got from... Um... Oh, well, then, yes. And then the point still stands. Um it is a metal. It is a metal extended extended spear from uh, Zane's father, Malleus. Yeah. Um, Malleus so, so yeah, the 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 rod, like the actual rod part of the spear, grows the bright red as if it's being smelted down. It doesn't get quite to the point where it's malleable, but it, it gets really hot really fast as you stick it into. Um, okay, then I'm gonna pull it back. Um, and I haven't tried talking to it yet. Uh, I will go, uh, greetings. Are you able to communicate? Um, you feel a little bit of a, um, like a little bit of a slight headache come on. Make a wisdom saving throw. Um, you hear a voice in your head, but you do end up taking seven points of psychic damage. Um, and in your head, you hear a familiar voice, one that has resided in your brain for as long as you could understand what your actions are this this voice is so familiar that you do feel a little bit of something that Vivra doesn't feel a whole lot of and that is sadness you feel overwhelmed with this unruling feeling of guilt and you hear this voice steep into your brain my boy. You're well, I see. Are... 
This is strange. Why am I here? It... Are you... Father, where are we? Uh, I... Uh, and I, I do not know. This is going to take place... This conversation is going to take place in Sabathian. Oh, yeah. Fair. Okay. So, uh... If anybody was witnessing of this, they'd be hearing a very broken French Creole language being spoken right now. Um, uh, I'd have no idea. I I was in the other world for a moment, and now I'm here. And s look at you. You've grown up. Gone strong by the looks of it. He, 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 confused though my my magics don't seem to work here and for the now as you're beginning to communicate you feel a vis a, an image starting to pop in your head almost as if you're in your own brain space and the the area around you disappears and you find yourself in this white basically like a white room so utterly bright that it's hard to keep your eyes open and standing in front of you is your father your adopted druid father who whom the last time you saw was dead and um he looks at you i think that place does not allow magic at least in the conventional way uh, and yet you are here. I am. I... I do not know how, but I'm here. Um... And he... Before he even said, he'll just walk up and give you a hug. His uh, okay, I will... His ethereal body will walk up and just give you a hug. Uh, I... I'm marginally less awkward at hugging than he remembers. Very and, marginally less. <laughs> and he does pick up on that. I see you've gotten used to some of this. Uh, that means you found friends, I assume. Yes. Good, good. A new tribe, so to speak. That's... That's good. That... That's one thing I regretted, leaving, leaving you behind, and was, yeah. Um, uh, I do not understand why I am here, nor why you are here. But I have a feeling it's for a reason. When you saw me in, in that place, what, what was my form? Did I have a body? Was I... A mode of light. Almost a flame. Okay. Okay. He's gonna make a, um... He's gonna make an arcana check. Because I have stats for, for your daddy. <laughs> I made this. I made the character sheet. Even though he's dead. <laughs> even though he's dead, but you know. Sometimes characters get brought back to life for odd reasons. Um... Best. Uh... Shit. That's a, uh, that's a 33. Your daddy's, your daddy's a smart motherfucker. That's, that's how it is. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, he will, like, you'll see his hands reach out. It seems we're being drawn by some sort of celestial magics. It's almost, it's come, it's not coming from a being, although it is. It's coming from something, something tangible. But the gods have been long been locked away. I, I, my friends and I were seeking out a powerful artifact, Cordero. He will roll a history check to see if he's ever heard of that. That's a natural twenty. Uh, so that that is a, a thirty-five uh, for a history check. Um, he will. 
that would explain things. The from everything I've heard about that those gems, they were well, they're legend. But if you're searching for one, and I'm here, I I assume that might be what's drawing me here. That means I have a purpose. And he will. You'll see his hand like like reach out, and you'll see flames start to erupt from it. And he'll, like, close his fist. Why can I do that? Hmm. I did not know. And that he... is something that... That was usually one of my powers. Let me... Try... Try using... You Try using that same spell. Right now. Go ahead and try to produce flame. Nothing. Huh. I'm going to try to uh, druid craft just a little, like, small flower into my hand. You watch a flower apparate into your hand. Well, it seems that one still works, and he will do the exact same thing and match the flower. Try one thing. Um, maybe. Are you aware of the spell Misty Step? Uh, I've seen it used, but I've never been able to use it before. Well, it's good you've seen it used. Um, he's going to try to use it. You see him, like, step forward and nothing happens. Think I'm going to try. Think about where you want to go within 30 feet in this space and think you want to show up there. Yep. So you... Go you, ahead and do that. Um... Go ahead and mark off a, a second level spell slot. Boys. You just switch to again. Uh, for the first time in your life, it it feels it's odd because you've you know you've been teleported before a few times, but you've never produced a teleportation ability by yourself. And you look to a space in the room, you blink your eyes, and you're there. It seems you have my abilities, and I have yours. Didn't you have that little creature that you used to summon all the time? Um, uh, I knew. Yeah. yeah, let me... And he'll like look down and just think about that new, and a flash of fire ends up on the ground next to you. I think I... So has this weird space switched... Ha... Brought me back to being somehow and then switched our our powers? Um, Alright, let me try one thing. And he will... Uh... He will, like, look around and... You'll see him reach out his hand and a wall of plants starts to grow into this space and around you. And he's like, oh, okay, that still works. When you were in the other space, did you try casting any other spells? Other than your flame? Most of my spells have come from my flame before. I didn't think to try anything else. Okay. Well, you're gonna not see me. You're gonna see whatever form I, I am. But maybe try going back to that space and using a s spell, um, a good one to use. Um, I guess a good one to use would be Misty Step, but I know that uses. I guess try using. Misty step whenever you get there and see if it transfers over. I 
I don't know how any of this works. Neither do I. And for the first time in a few years, you're starting to see your father's over-analytical uh, druid brain going in overdrive, trying to figure out something. And as you think to try, as you like try to figure out how to bring yourself out of this space, assuming that's what you want to do, um, you kind of hear a voice muffling saying, son, wake up, wake up. And you'll open your eyes and you are now, as you wake up, you're now in Engulfed in it, it, these vines are now lit on fire, and standing next to you is <laughs> your your newt, who has you've realized the fire has spread because of him. Whoops! Trying to wake you up, and as you stand up, this little floating ball of light that you now know to be some, maybe the, sp the spirit of your of your adopted father you are now you have your f facilities about you you're standing on your own two feet but you still feel that sand underneath just breathing in and out and when you uh when you look to try to find where that f that ball of fire is it's like a little tiny dot in front of you you do not know how much time has passed, nor do you know how far you've moved. All you can see is just this little flicker of light a thousand feet away from you. Um, I'm going to get up, and I know I can't cover the whole distance, but I'm at least going to try to misty step as close to it as I can. You... Missy step, you missed step, you missed step 30, 30 feet. You missed step 30 feet. Mark off a spell slot okay. for me. Um, yep. As you missy step, you hear echoing through and through your head. Good, good. That there must be a reason for this. Uh, get, get close to me again. Maybe we. I don't understand this. Um, I. And you hear as you hear a frustrating, kind of frustrated sound coming out of his voice to nothing but static in your head. And all of a sudden he's not talking. I'm going to keep on keeping on, keep on making my way that way. OK, so after about five minutes of walking, because timing your steps to get closer you only can take about three or four steps every every time it sucks back out. Um, you take a step, take a step, take a step, uh, and um, you eventually get to where you're close to this ball of flame, and it's still just floating there, bobbing up and down. You hear nothing in your head. What would you like to do? Um, just call out, uh, Father, are you there? Make a wisdom saving throw. Let's see. The DC was much higher on this one. <laughs> um, which you, you just barely meet. You just barely met. Um, you hear, oh, thank God. You went quiet. You got far away from me, I think. Uh, anyways. I've been thinking as you've been away. Um, perhaps it may be best for you to touch this flame. I know it might seem suicidal. I don't so, even uh, let him finish that sentence, but I reach out and try to touch the flame. Okay. Um, you touch the flame and immediately it starts to roast you, roast your hand al alive. Uh, you feel your scale start to harden and burn. You smell what basically, basically scales are bone uh, in, in, a, in a scientific sense. 
so you start to smell with with smells like burning bone, uh, which is a very distinct smell. Um, and you keep grabbing on, and you do take. Uh, 15 points of fire damage. Alright. As you take 15 points of fire damage, I'd like you to make a constitution saving throw. As your father says, keep at it. My brain is not working right now. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. And constitution save, you said? Yes. Fifteen. Um, you go to reach in, and it, you do feel what seems to be a almost like a ball that you grab. is it, is like a it is like it feels kind of like a baseball, um, but it's burning, and it feel it honestly feels like you're grabbing a molten piece of like hot coal, and as you keep grabbing onto it and grabbing onto it, you can feel your arm start to also burn and smoke you feel your clothes start to like singe in the any any bit of like ori hair that was left over on you from from sleeping close to him starts to burn away and um you do end up taking 25 points of fire damage more um What's which I believe you're resistant to fire. So this is all halved, right? Uh, I don't think I am. Are you not? Okay. Um, I am not. So as you go to grab, you feel this intense heat. And then you feel your father say, just a little bit more. And in your heart, you feel the, dru the druid power that has ignited you for, you're 16, right? For 16 years, the druid power that has naturally flowed through you, you feel it ignite in your heart and in your soul. And you can feel this intense heat start to settle into the very core of your body. And you can feel your father's own presence start to fade away as this happens. And you hear in your head, and all he said, all you hear is. It was a pleasure seeing you again, my son. And I'm not going to reply because I'm concentrating on not screaming. <laughs> um, and as you go to breathe in one more time, you feel your father's consciousness slip from your brain. I need you to make one more constitution saving throw. Twelve. You take 30 points of fire damage. Uh, but as you absorb in to just lay into this flame, you feel your heart beat. How hurt are you right now? Um, Under a quarter at this point. Okay. If my math is right, which I think it is. It sinks into your chest. You feel the flame go up into your arm through your hand as if you're producing a flame. And the very essence of this magical energy seeps into your scales. And it feels familiar. You feel it's your own. This is yours. This is your magic. This is everything you've ever worked on with your druid skills and it seeps back into your soul and as it as it sit, settles into your belly you do take a set amount of fire damage which is 43 points of fire damage then I'm out you feel yourself go unconscious and lay on the ground you take an exhale as you go unconscious And then you wake up in a stone cavern. Uh, it's like a hallway filled uh, 
with stone everywhere, uh, 15 to 20 feet high ceilings, and standing next to you, uh, and actually currently standing over you, is a... Uh, is a Alara. She's currently looking at you, poking you, saying, Vivra, wake up. I don't know where Ori is, but I'm scared, and you're the only one I know here, so wake up. Uh, you're currently unconscious, and by the way, add Misty Step to a as a usable spell to your spell list. Ooh. Fancy. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Um, and Alara realizes, well, she's going to make a medicine check. It's cocked. Uh, she realizes very quick that you're unconscious, so she's going to uh, she's going to cast a cure wounds on you. <laughs> that's the shittiest roll I've had all day. Uh, it's a one on there, so that's a uh, plus six for her. So it's seven points of healing, but you are awake. Um, cool. we'll take that. And let me bring her. Uh... <laughs> Let me bring up her character sheet. <laughs> you are Miss Lucky today. The first two things that I'm going to do while you're doing that mm. is look at my... I was grabbing with my left hand. So I'm going to look at my hand to make sure that it hurts to see if it is burnt, like how bad it is burnt. Um, you look at your hand and your greenish yellow scales are no longer green and red or greenish and yellow they are a crimson red only on your hand and you remember back to your father and you remember that his his own scales were a deep dark crimson red oh was he a dragonborn no he or a, a lizard, lizard yeah he was a lizard folk the entirety of that village oh, is okay. lizard folk yeah um oh okay but you were you were a foundling you were a uh you were not of the same scale color as them hence why got it and okay you look in your hand from basically your fingertips to your elbow it... <laughs> was that a, was that a murdoch Sorry. yeah yes it was. <laughs> <laughs> i just saw that i'm like oh okay <laughs> uh, from fingertip to elbow is very reminiscent of your father's arm uh, and you look and it's it's different <laughs> um, but it's not burned it is changed and for the first time you feel where you felt like you would never have any like any doubts about how you felt about your clan and about their demise for the first time in a very long time you feel connected to them in a very strange way not in a biological standpoint but in a spiritual standpoint and hence why you have now learned Misty Step, because that is a that was the signature spell of the tribe, being primarily, um, primarily of uh, dream of Circle of Dream descent, druids. So, um, you wake up and Alara's just sitting there poking you, <laughs> and she she heals you, and she just looks down because are are you okay? Mm -hmm. This one has been better. Oh, okay. Kinda stand up. <laughs> She's going to immediately dump another, uh, uh, we'll say, a third level of Cure Wounds into you. Um, because she realizes uh, how hurt you are. Uh, is, uh, wow. That's two eights and a five. So um, that's uh, 27 more points of healing to you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, little one. Yeah, um, I don't 
know where anybody else is. Uh, one thing you do notice, uh, sitting on Alara's head is not only normal froggy, but you notice another frog sitting on top of her head that is completely mm. different colored and does and as soon as you flag it with your pat with your passive perception you immediately flag that as not of this world um i'll go ahead and um, offer her my hand to kind of pick her up and i can't necessarily sit her on my head like Ori does but i'm sure i could sit her on my shoulders okay yeah she and she she's she's well, you're not Ori, but you know it's it's good enough, and she'll she'll <laughs> hop up on your shoulders. Um, and the so you have found a new pet. Oh yeah, and she'll bring him down. Uh, this one's name is Elvis. He uh, I found him in a dream world, and he'll. And she'll like bring down Elvis in front of you, which Elvis is like this, uh, like neon yellowish green colored toad with like a white belly. But as you look at his eyes, he's it's not a frog or toad eyes; it's like bovine eyes. And he just lo he just uh, he looks at you, and in full perfect calm, and he says, "What up, baby?" <laughs> I'm just going to kind of rub my head and uh, um, ignore the frog for a second. <laughs> um, I look at my hand. Um, this one has received something new as well. And I'll kind of show her that my arm has changed. Wow. Huh. And she'll just like look at and poke at your arm. Does it hurt? Not anymore. Huh. Well, that's good. And then Alara will just go full blank brain mode like Alara does mm -hmm. as she says that. Well. Um. And then she points forward and she's like, I guess we're going this way. I guess we are. Let's see if we can find anyone else, shall we? Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and um has to locate object okay what are you trying to locate um i think it would have to be ori's axe okay or glaive actually probably ori's glaive okay ori's glaive that's a thousand feet away right uh yep thousand feet okay um, um, I just want to remind you that Alara and I have the the necklaces that like. Mm -hmm, I know. Okay. Yeah, I made note of that because. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say Alara. Alara is not focused on finding anybody but Ori at this point. Um, that makes sense. Uh, Ori is her safety blanket. I guess that was more for Elka than for. Her. It, it is more for Elka being big sister mode, <laughs> uh, losing Alara the way that she gets lost. Um, Okay, uh, you do sense Ori's glaive uh, within the thousand feet. It's about nine hundred or so feet away, so it is a good little walk, and it's straight ahead through the corridor. And it's probably it's straight ahead, slightly to the left, uh, as you look down okay. the corridor. So uh, I assume you start walking that way. Um, let's refresh. Oh, yeah. Now that we're here, let's re let's refresh. Who's with who? So you got Ori, um, you've got Ori, Zane, and Alan together. You have Beep and, um, why can't I remember, uh, hold on. Where's my, the, uh, the wizard guy. It's not Ornthalus, it's his freaking... Tony, oh, yeah. I'm blanking on his name. It with an S? Um, yes, it does, I believe. Oh, wait, I have, I haven't. What am I doing? There's a tab open with with a list of NPC names. Let me just look at that. <laughs> Fried brain syndrome. That's. 
What's the name of Sex Head? Uh, FBS, baby. FBS. Where is. What? Oh, oh there it is. Um, Celica. Celica is his name. Uh, Beep is with Celica. Uh, Alara is by. Or not Alara. Elka is by herself. Um, and Thaddeus, you are with Ornthalus. Are we? I, I'm looking at the map. Do you have us on the map at all? Or? Yeah, so top, top right of where the corner. Here, I'll, I'll ping it. Um, we don't have a map. I don't have a map uh, open for you guys uh, for the Deeper Vault because it's it's an exploratory uh, theater of the mind thing until it's not. Um, okay. But where, where. If you're looking. What I have. The map I have up is, is uh, Arndur the Arndor road map okay. that you would have grabbed from uh, Ornthalus's study. And where you're at is the deeper vault right here on my ping. Okay. Um, and, and we're all... Uh, Zach, if you hold... Zach, if you hold shift and ping, mm -hmm. uh, you actually drag everybody's uh, view frame to there. Oh, that's good to know. Um... Yeah, I'm still figuring out the uh, the ins and outs of Roll20. Uh, but, even though it's been over a year. Okay, uh, and then, um, am I missing anybody? I'm sorry if I am. So we got, we got Ori, uh, we got Ori and Zane together. We got Beep and uh, Beep with Celica. We got uh, Elka by, uh, by herself. Um... Brain do do math here, so Zane Ori beat by himself, but with Celica, Thaddeus with Ornthalus, Elka by herself, and then uh, okay, then Alara and Vibra together. Okay, so we're gonna go quickly to um, Beep. All right, um, you're with Celica, and Celica's currently sitting down next to a fire that he's he's made. Um, with just the few bits of wood and scrap that he was able to grab before coming into the vaults. And he just kind of looks at you and goes, Well, I, uh, I suppose we should go find everybody else. Um, Beep. let me try some, inter let me try an interesting thing. And he will, uh, he will cast Locate Object. Um, and he's going to try to locate Ornthalus. Uh, Ornthalus' spell book. And he kind of like does a little bit of weaving of magic. And he just like thinks, he's like, oh, okay, he's uh, he's close. Uh, he's kind of close. Uh, let's go find him and then we'll find everybody else. Beep just gonna give a little thumbs up. Okay. So you two start walking into this, towards the center chamber. Um, Thaddeus and Ornthalus. Uh, Thaddeus, you find yourself with a. Uh, uh, with with uh, Ornthalus, this over eccentric mage that you have picked up, and oh, look at look at Murdoch being Murdoch. He's being a cutie boy, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> Bingo just said his name as he looked straight into the camera. That was probably that was funny, um, or maybe it was one of his family members. But uh, either way. Uh, Thaddeus, you're you're with Ornzalis, and he he kind of looks. He's like, well, I guess we'll just uh, f uh fuck me, and he will. Um... <laughs> Did he really say it that? No, way? no, he didn't. Uh, he said he said fuck me, and not looking at you. Uh, and he will uh, he will cast a uh, uh, locate creature because he did just had to roll a. Uh, I just had to roll a history check to remember if uh, um, to remember if anybody had any animal companions. And Alara, he, he remembered Froggy, so he's going to cast Locate Creature on Froggy. And immediately go, oh, well, that little Froggy friend the, of your little goblin friend uh, is not too far away. Uh, it's actually heading pretty close to us. Um, let's go this way. And he'll point down the hallway. Well, that seems like a good idea. Maybe you, I'll let you. Let's get 
start by saying, God knows what's in this place. I uh, couldn't agree more. All right, let's go. Um, and uh, he will continue walking with Actually, you. Actually, I'm going to... Although you may not see me, and I'm going to pull my cloak over my head. Oh, well, what do you mean? I still see you. Okay. That's nice to know. Oh. Oh, did you do some, some interesting magic trick? Oh, okay. Uh, I have a cloak of invisibility. Oh. That's what this little weird veil is. Oh, okay. That makes sense to me now. Uh, sorry, I've had... I have... Uh, I can see invisible shit. Let's just put it that way, permanently. And he'll point to the his right eye. And if you make a perception check, actually, Todd. Uh, so, if you can see invisible stuff, you can see me. Can you see anything else that I might not be able to see? Um. Well, uh, things are, are are invisible, but yes. Uh, did you make a perception check? Twenty. Whoa. Damn. Uh, you do see this. As he points to his right eye, you see ingrained into his eye in very faint, almost like matching the color of his green eye is a faint magic circle that is glowing right now, a darker green. And he'll point to his eye. I did this probably fucking 500 years ago, but uh, it works for me. Okay, that's good. This lets me see invisible shit. Keep me posted if you see something that you know is invisible that I might not see. Okay, all right, sounds good. Um, and then the, he'll he let's go, and he'll he'll uh, he'll keep walking. Um, now we go to Zane, Ori, and Alan. Um, well, I don't know which way to go. How about you guys? No idea. Damn. All right. We're stuck forever. Wait, Ori, aren't you a minotaur? Don't can't don't you have like really good sense of direction when we're in these types of situations? Yes, but I've given up entirely. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, what are the what's the cavern look like again? It's it's uh the one you guys are in. So there's a way back that Alan came from that said was a dead end. There's a little side room, like a little offshoot that Zane walked out of. And then there was this main cavern, which is about 50 feet high and about 40 feet wide uh, that you guys are in right now. And the only way forward is the, the way that either of you have not gone yet. Let's go this way point to the one we haven't gone to yet okay i thought for sure you point the way i came from just to be an ass but all right let's go was i don't know why you asked me this is literally the only other way to go well you know i i, I get that but you know i just uh whatever come on let's go i don't like i'm following your lead big guy you never get lost so i'm lost that's what <laughs> or he walks one step all right, let me get a little flat going on here, and he will, uh, Alan will tap his staff, and the dancing lights will come out. Um, uh, so you keep walking forward, and uh, eventually, uh, all of you, except for Elka, find your way into this center cavern area. Um, in front of you, uh, are multiple entryways and hallways, and you watch every party member, except for Elka, walk out of one of those hallways. Where's our bunny? Um, I don't see her. Yeah, that's really fucking so weird. Does not know. Huh. Well, interesting. Did she not tell the statues a thing? She did before I left. Before this one left. Well, she's got to be here somewhere. 
or puts his hand on Zane's shoulder. She will be missed. We <laughs> must move on. We're not just abandoning our friend. What the fuck? Um, I will go ahead and do a locate object on one of her weapons, the icy one. Okay. You go to cast locate object and wherever she is, she is not within a thousand feet of you. Or that her sword is not within a thousand feet of you, at the very least. She may not be nearby. This one cannot feel her weapon. She's already moved on. Well, I mean, isn't there other methods of trying to figure her out where she is, or do we think, do we think that she'll be all right by herself? I, I don't think we should go terribly far without her. All right, but she is not within a thousand foot radius. I'm aware. I still don't think we should go too far without her. Am I with these guys? Yeah, every, everyone has converged now. And and I should describe the room because you're in it currently. Um, you are in a... What seemed to be a broken down cliff area. Uh, that... Like, there's, there's a giant crevasse that's cracking down the middle. It's a multi-terraced room and in front of you is just multiple multiple pathways that converge in and uh as you look around uh, there's no real way to go other than farther into the room and where all of you come out at is you're currently on the lowest level of the terraced room um alan Doesn't we have a sending stone with her do we? Just for... He has the one for... Somebody. This one doesn't remember. Ornthalus like, looks up. I, I suppose I could I could cast a sending spell and see if she says anything. If we, we don't want to do that. We can't leave without her. She's part of... Part of the family. Part of I've the ship, part of the crew. On. I've accepted it. You all need to as well. Well, I would you we still don't. be this way, Ori, if it was Alara who was missing? By the way, Alara has has rapidly like like ran up Ori's back and is now happily on his head. No, I would be. I would hmm. still be at the first stage of denial. And well, we're in denial. Of denial. Uh, then out out of nowhere, on top of uh, out of what seems to be air, you hear a voice come out from the top of Alara's head. Well, I think uh, uh, I don't know. I think I think she's probably dead, if you ask me. Who the? F hey there, baby. Oh, <laughs> this one forgot. Um, apparently that is Elvis. Interesting. At your service, Elvis. Yes, sir. At your service. And the, if if a frog could do finger guns, he'd do it. Um, Does he do a funny dance with his legs? No, he does not. Fuck. Nobody will tell you. What's Thank the you. Point? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's pretty uh, good. Uh, Who is this? Elvis. Uh, how did you join us? I woke up on this little one's head here. He, he's been here the whole time. The froggy's okay. real no, name that is one Elvis. Is froggy. I and mean, Froggy no, just kind of like they've both oh, been there the whole time. Froggy just hops like to the top of like the farther top of Valeris and just kind of like looks at all of you right next to Elvis. We Asserts his dominance. We all need to refocus. Get heavy up there. And figuring out where she is and why she is not with this group. And if anybody disagrees with me, then you will suffer from the tip of my rapier. What are you going to do, Thaddeus? Tell tip. them that you're from the House of Sterling? I would expect this from Ori, but not you, saying. I think I'd rather get stabbed again than hear you say you're from a house you're not a part of anymore. I'm just frustrated. At least I have a family 
I have a fa my family's alive. What are you talking about? Oh, I well, thought you killed some them of them all. are. No, no, you know you don't. You haven't met my my parents. You just killed some of them. Okay. Yeah. Well. All right. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. People, I'm just frustrated. Well, I, one of us is missing. You, I know. And the people that respect the, uh, the we have, we have become a family. And those of us who don't respect that need to leave. We're missing one of our family. We've all lost our family. We all have that in common. So let's uh, well, uh, well, my parents are still. Except, um, except for except for. You're projecting again. You've yes. met my. <laughs> we <Weaver. laughs> With his arm, his now red arm, um, reaches in and hands uh, Ori a pound of harpy jerky. I'm just gonna kind of stare at Thaddeus for a second. Like you've met my family. You burn your I'm head. sorry. Okay, you're the only one that has any type of stable family. The rest of us are. What are you all talking about? Bit. The parents are awesome. I thought you tried to eat them. So it was my aunt and my uncle. Or he would never eat his family. So my cousins are pretty cool, too. Can we just please find so, LJ? I actually have 12 cousins. You see Orenthalus holding up to his ear and going, Uh, yeah, Elka, uh, 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 are you there? Uh, I, I f your friends are worried about you. Um, Some yeah. of them, not all of them. I was just wondering where you are. Uh, you could respond to this message. Uh, Elka, full disclosure, you hear nothing coming into your head um and Arnthalus looks around and goes shit did I not prepare that today no I did fuck she's not answering guess we should just look around okay what did we all just go through uh, I met, I met with my mother and my, I was walking out the door to meet with Noetic, and my father was standing at the door. I had you almost met with a traitor? Yes, my father. Oh, I was talking about Thaddeus. Or, yeah, Noetic. Please, Thank you. I, I, not, I'm actually going to bristle a little bit at not that. call Thaddeus. Excuse well, me, do I would not never call know Noetic <laughs> a traitor. He's working with knows. the vampire. He is under a spell of some sort of madness. This one agrees. This so, one would agrees. It, wouldn't it be messed up if he wasn't uncontrolled? He was just like that. What a twist. That is what happens if we get to him and he's not being controlled. Then I will kill him. I could kill him if you want, if it's oh, too I much would let trouble. Ori kill him, because Ori seems to have the need to do that. Yeah, that's me. That's my red flag. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, just like killing people. It's my, it's my red flag. <laughs> All I'm his, saying is I know bio. what I just went through to get here. And it was a visit with my mother who I felt betrayed me and as I was leaving to find Noetic my father interrupted and stopped me at the door and now I'm with you all did I your guys is, uh, did we all go through this this I... one saw his father I was... feel like it was some sort of test I was it a was child was by the way interesting I didn't really see anybody but myself in there. I, I killed myself in mine. I think I fucked it up. I was a child. I had to teach the meaning of life to a warforged. <laughs> God, you must have been there for days. It sure went quicker than it seemed. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, said warforged is standing right behind Zane. No, you said it was in the core. Oh, right, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Uh, I was on Warforge for a second, and he vanished. That's <laughs> just a figment of your imagination. Mm. Um, yeah, the Warforge is in its core, yeah. 
Alara, what did you see? I saw a, a dreamscape full of really trippy things with a big deer named Elvis. Now he's this. He was a deer, now he's a frog? Oh, deer oh, yeah. would have been so useful. Oh, yeah, baby. This time. I was a deer. Could you turned back into a deer. We really need a deer. Uh, well, there, you can, can you turn, turn back into a deer. Well, where's Dennis? Oh, fuck, where's Dennis? I don't think Dennis, Dennis can speak his truth. To stare. He's, he's so honest. <laughs> oh, my God. I miss Dennis. <laughs> All right, refocus, refocus, refocus. Okay. If, we find, if we find Dennis and he's dead, I'm killing everyone and then myself. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Just kill you. Except Alara. She can live and tell the tale of what happened. Alara will just die of eating too much cheese. Well, as all of you are bickering, Elka. <laughs> uh, let's get into this. Let's do it. Uh, I, you can send my apologies, deepest apologies to your therapist uh, this week or whenever you see them next. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, you find yourself in a deep cavern, uh, standing down, staring down in an abyss with a rope ladder, a rope and wooden ladder that goes across the abyss to the other side. It seems pretty shaky at best. Uh, from your best, uh, just little check of it with your passive perception. Um, you hear, uh, to get, to jump across is what you're trying to think about doing. Yeah. It's like, it's like 90 feet. Mm, okay. Um, you look around and wind starts blowing. Um, and it, on that wind, you almost... <sighs> You feel like you just hear a bit of a, a voice come over. And you hear, Elka. Elka. My dear. My dear. You'll be okay. And you recognize all these voices that are coming through and they're all that of your family you hear archers you hear El you hear Elkises you hear Pavins you hear your mothers your fathers your grandfathers and they're all just echoing through you hear you, you hear it's a damn shame she doesn't have magic. Just get rid of her however you can. And then you hear, but father, she's my, she's my only daughter. And then you hear Elkis say, dad, you can't just get rid of him. That's... No, I, I, I refuse. I refuse to kill my own brother. And then you hear Archer say, Can't we just fucking kill them all and be done with it, Elkis? Fuck this family. I'll protect her however I can. And this is all happening to you as you're staring down at an abyss with only a little rope ladder to go across. What do you want to do? I'm gonna jump into the pit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> you know what? They're right. Bye. Um, I think I'm gonna tentatively step onto, I guess, warily is. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just like, slightly step onto the bridge like tip just like tip tip of, put your toe in the water like, type of deal yeah yeah like like give it a little like push and see if it can like hold me up kind of thing seems sturdy a little bit swaying because of the wind but it seems sturdy and my jaw as all of this is happening you're you're hearing uh you're hearing cries of your mother saying where did she go 
Honey, what did you do to her? I'll never forgive you. And you'll hear... Uh, you, you'll hear Elkis say, uh, say, I'd never kill my brother, nor would I ever kill my niece. She deserves to be protected, father. You want to put a full foot on that bridge? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to try really hard to just focus on the bridge and not what I'm hearing. Okay, so you're trying to... So you're actively trying to block it all out. Yeah. Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, you can't give me that kind of power and expect me not to utilize it. Hey, my brain immediately <laughs> went the uh, concentration check. Wait a second. I one. <laughs> oh, oh, honey. <laughs> uh, you put you put one full foot <laughs> on that bridge. And your foot goes through, and you start to plummet down into the abyss. You're... Wait, I, I mean, like, I was not like, I was just like, I was still holding on and stuff. Sounds like Ori was on to something, guys. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I, that was that was actually a joke. No, what, you, what, what does happen, you take one full step, and you feel the bridge sway with the wind, and each weighted... Uh, each weighted word that comes through uh, shakes the bridge more. You hear, uh, you you hear, she's nothing but a failure. She she's better off dead than useful to this family. What good does swinging a sword around do? And then you hear Archer say, "Can I just kill your fucking dad?" Uh, and as each insult and, and protection comes in, they're clashing into each other, swinging this bridge as hard as you can. Do you want to keep trying to go across? Uh, there's like, there's like, there's like rails, like, like, yeah, uh, there's ropes to hang on. Just, it's, uh, it's your standard, like Indiana Jones bridge. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think. Uh. Those notoriously stay up, right? Shut <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh I I'm gonna I have I have rope. Mm-hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie the rope around my waist. And I know that there's like the like pieces of rope that go up and down, but I'm gonna tie ropes. I'm going to tie the rope on either side to each side of the bridge as I go, and then I'm going to go slowly, and then when I get to one of the up and down rope parts, I'm going to, like, untie it and tie it to the next part. Okay, well, that'll so help that you. That's going to help you with uh, your uh, dexterity saving throws. So, you doing that, uh, the DC is going to be lower. Cool. Um, so, as each wind gusts through with insults, Another one comes in with reaffirmations. You just hear a mixture of emotional waves coming through, and you try your best to ignore it, but you just can't. All, all the trauma that has been building up in your young life is just hitting you all at once. It feels like you're being suffocated by a wave of nothing but just bad feelings that you let that you tried to leave behind in Arun, and. Uh, you see each step feels heavier and heavier and heavier and you feel the bridge swaying make a dexterity saving throw I'm not using that dice <laughs> what the fuck hang on did you just I have roll indomitable it? I rolled a one you have indomitable so you could roll again okay I would have laughed my ass off if that was a one again. I'm sorry. Uh, 22. 22. You take a step. You tie yourself off. It, it gets harder and harder, but you continue moving on. You hear more insults from your grandfather, say, uh, basically saying that no grandchild of mine uh, was born without magic. Get rid of her as a babe. And you hear another you hear a reaffirmation from your mother saying, I just want her to come home. 
and uh, each one feels uh, each wave of negative energy is met with a wave of positive loving energy and it's just it's hitting and it's hard to keep your concentration it's hard to keep moving forward i need you to make another dexterity saving throw as a wild gust of just a maelstrom of insults hits you all at once 16 you stumble to the ground of, or you stumble to the bot to the base of this bridge swinging you're hanging on for dear life but you're able to stand up just barely and continue moving forward you're about a quarter of a way across this bridge uh and then i'm i'm just gonna say um elka's just got tears just streaming down her face but she's just gonna push through it like she's not gonna she's just she's just gonna keep going and aim for the other side of the bridge you okay you hear the words of the bronze dragon that you met just just moments before echo through your head this is a challenge of ordeals do you want to find yourself, or would you would you remain weak in your own self pity? I'm gonna scream. I'm not weak. Aren't you? And then take another I'm step forward. It. Make another dexterity saving throw. I'm just gonna keep screaming. I'm not weak. I'm not useless. I'm not worthless. Uh, 21. 21. You're able to keep moving forward. You're about halfway across the bridge now. And this is where it gets rough. You feel your legs giving out. Your knees are shaky. For uh, for the first time in a very long time, your, the, 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 your bunny rabbit legs that you're so proud of being so strong are no longer strong. It's hard to keep, your, keep the own weight of your small frame up. And you, as you push forward you hear a uh, um, you hear a voice emanate through this cavern and it's Archer and he says come on kid it's just a few steps you're a little slow you're just half a step slow I know if you get this you'll be great and you immediately a memory a, a flashes back you, you know this this that very line you remember the time when you're training with uh, with Archer, and then immediately a wave of negative emotions from Pavin come in and say, "What a useless fucking sister! Can't even cast a simple firebolt." Huh. And uh, I'm gonna need you to make another dexterity saving throw. I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and remember the Pavin that I know now. And not the one in the past. And remember that sometimes we have to grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm I rolled I rolled an eighteen. An eighteen. Uh, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna scream into the void. I know that's not Pavin. That's not who he is anymore. He loves me, and I love him. Okay. You take another step forward, and you feel the board snap underneath your foot. But you continue before you keep you continue moving forward, headstrong in your beliefs, knowing that your brother is not the not the snobby piece of shit he used to be. And you get real close, and all of a sudden the void goes quiet. And all you hear is just a light brush of the wind, and in your heart, you in in your heart, you know that you're almost there, and you hear in your left ear, and just a very warm, blowing gust. You hear your mother's voice come through and says, "It's okay if you're different, Elka. Your father's a little bit of a little bit headstrong, but you're fine. I know you'll be fine, sweetie. Do what you do what you want." You have to follow these traditions. Make another. Make your last dexterity saving throw. As a gust of slurs that I'm not allowed to say, 
uh, and insults come flying in at you at mock speed of your grandpa's voice, just hating you. Your father mixed in there with hate, wanting you dead. In that twenty. Let's go. <laughs> as as you push forward, you embrace the 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 love that you know your mother has for you, and. You embrace that feeling of warmth and you make it across this bridge. You make it to the other side and in your head you hear the dragon state, See? I know you could do it. Now go on. Move forward. And claim your prize. Let's go. You start walking forward. We're going to go back to the group. Now! <laughs> You're the one who wanted to go on your own. <laughs> um, everybody, you're you're kind of sitting around trying to figure out where the hell Elk is. Elk is. Weavra, passive perception, very high. You hear skittering. Of unnatural speed. It's almost like bugs moving. And you can't understand what it is. There is something around us. But it's eer it's eerily similar. You felt this before. Make a um... Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> uh, make a um we wrote do me a favor and just make a general perception check. Twenty seven. You feel down to your bone, down to your bones, you know what these are. You remember thinking back into a basement in um, an Artemis when you're searching for Alara. A These weird arachnid-like motionless or motionless, voidless of soul creatures that tr that can have the ability to transform and as this this feeling of dread washes over you as as a as a spellcaster everybody who's a spellcaster here here feels a bit of a shiver go down their spine as one giant insect like claw comes over comes out of this like crack in the ground and standing in front of you is if I can switch everybody over um, is a group of mage hunters staring all of you down frill these the gem like frills on their back out in full radar all of them focused on Zane and on Alara and on Vivra and on Ornthalus and Celica and Alan and they are ready to hunt. Everybody roll initiative. Yeah, boy. Yeah, is there a map? Yeah, there should be. Um, uh, I only see blue. You only see blue? What? Oh, I see the map. Let me just oh, Let me refresh then. I was going to say, do you want to place us X so that way we know where you want us yep. to be starting at? Uh, I can do that. There it is. Um, where's the initiative tracker on this new one? Turn order. There it is. Um, I had to go it, for a minute. It's Beep. Beep's also, yeah, Beep's also here. Sorry, I forgot. Okay. I always forget I, I always forget. Uh, Beep is also a spellcaster until you do dumb shit, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bard. <laughs> yeah, I do have them. Fuck, where I don't need that. So, five mage hunters come crawling out of this crevice um i need you guys well, let me move this up here uh, oh, yeah. we need to put our put the tokens down so we can put an initiative easier yeah let me i'm, I'm grabbing i'm grabbing going down the list uh okay alan um oh, do you just want us all where alan is yeah all right cool Throw a layer, throw a layer down. I mean, it's not letting me do it. That's fine. I'll get you. Me um, neither. I'll also get you. I don't know why it does that. 
I've I've like re-uploaded your tokens and stuff <laughs> on your character sheets and nothing. Um, what a great initiative roll. My initiative was like thirty-five. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Um, and then I need Ornsalis and Celica, which, uh, let's go ahead and grab, uh, this music. I have 122 initiative. <clears throat> God, you Damn, I only have 101. <laughs> I hate you. I rolled, I rolled a natural 100. <laughs> I rolled 69. Nice. Um, I didn't, we're rolling hundreds for initiative now? All right, hold on. Roll 1d100. I rolled my natty on my table. Where are my mage hunters? Where is my character sheet for them? Someone was not ready. You are when not I, prepared. When am I, when am I ever ready? <laughs> when we're playing, never. There we are. Okay. Um, have you... Okay, so... Initiative, initiative. Wonder why oh, it's... fuck, I'm at like half health. Actually, less than half. Yeah. Was it third of my health? I'm only a hair over a third. <laughs> but my, I'm, I'm a little over a third. On, walk up next to my hair. health is perfectly oh. fine. I can I can do healing early on. And I'm gonna put my I was gonna say I'm I mean either you can heal yourself or um or Ori and then I guess it depends on turn order. Yeah. I, I mean I, you have me beat by half point, a step. Point so. zero five. Yeah. <laughs> Just hold that it next tiebreaker though. Well, don't know why I didn't save their names. I'm using those those uh, tokens for them, but I, was, I guess they're just named Witherbloom Apprentice and Quandric Pledge Mage because they did, their names didn't save. Um, okay, so for some reason Thaddeus's didn't pop up, but that's fine. I got it. 22.2. Ori's is 24.14. Um, Zane's is 19. Alara's is... I have her character sheet open. Um, Alara is plus 2 to initiative, so that's uh, 12. Um... Celica's plus eight, uh, plus uh, five to initiative, so that's uh, 13. Oh, that's a one. No, 13. Um, that's cocked. Uh, Ornthalus is plus three, so it's 10. Alan is plus three. That's okay, that's not bad. 20 for Alan. And then the Mage Hunters. I already have a set. And turn. Oh, well, that's not what I wanted. And turn. Okay. So that's 21. That one is 12. Seven twenty six and seventeen. Okay, Bob. All right, uh, top of the initiative. Um, this one in the back with a move speed of what is her move speed? Holy shit, that's massive. Um, measure um right um it's going to it's 
It's going to scatter forward to the ledge. Actually, it's going to go up this ledge here and make it to there. Um, that is going to be the end of its turn. Ori, your turn. Uh, how tall is this ledge? Uh, uh, right here. Uh, like 40 feet high. Okay. Uh... Did I miss you step up here? Uh, no. Unfortunately. Because you would need to go up 40 feet. You So you'd have to crawl and you have to cl start climbing up, which is... To that, it's 10 feet. So if you climbed up that, you know, 10 feet, then you'd be able to misty step to, uh, like, there. Um, you'd be able to misty step to, like, right here if, if you started climbing. But it would be yeah, your, I'll, do, I'll do that. It would be, uh, it would be your action to climb, though, because it is a, it is a, uh, height that doubles your, more than doubles your actual height. Uh, actually, can can you guys heal me up there? Uh, with Alan can. Or, Alan can. Alan, uh, yeah. I'll trust Alan. I'll go. Up. How far can I go? Uh, you could go to right here if you climbed up ten feet in the misty step. Yeah, I'll do that. But that would be right here. that would be your entire movement action and bonus action. Yeah, that works. Okay. Well, uh, difficult. Give me a roll athletics or anything. No, you're strong enough to climb. It's just that you have to actually physically use your action to start climbing up. Uh, for okay. it, it, with, cool. yeah, it's just five E rules. If a if a cliff is double your height and you have to climb up it, uh, sorry, it's not double. It's triple your height, which it is. Uh, then you have to use an action to start climbing. Um. Okay. Uh. uh Thaddeus, it's your turn. You're, you're muted, buddy. What's my distance to... to? I don't know what I just did. Damn it. You are 90 feet across... Uh, well, that's a rock right there. So, 45... 35... 55. So, you're... Uh, you're 90 feet away. What about this one right here? Uh, well, it's behind a rock. Uh, so this is act. This one actually has half cover, um, but you're you're seventy five feet from that. But you can just see the top of its head peeking over the rock. All right, um, I'm going to move up to here. What? What is going on? I don't know why I can't. Uh, there. The click the little. Uh, you're 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 measuring. Click the little arrow button top left of your UI. That little left menu. There you go. Okay. All right. So now that's your movement. I, that's my movement. I am stealth because I said earlier that I was wearing my cloak. You are wearing your cloak. I will okay. allow that. And I am going to attack this one right here. Which one? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, hold left click on it. Okay. All right. Yeah, that one's out in the open. Okay. Uh, um. It's been a while since I got something in. Okay. Crossbow, longbow, long. Which is worse? Which has more damage? Hand, crossbow, or your your longbow by far and away will do more damage than a hand crossbow. I was gonna say. So let me make an attack roll with that. What? You click on the uh, on the okay, weapon per okay. usual. That's a 20 to hit. Uh, that does hit it. So uh, roll for damage. Which you, all you have to do is click on the... Uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, these are... 
Uh, since you are hidden, you do get sneak attack. Since you are, which you would have rolled with advantage. Right. So if you wanna, if you would, if you wanna roll for roll another time, so you get that nat twenty, you can. Yeah, no, okay. Um, so you do get sneak attack damage. 16, so that's uh, uh, 20, uh, 23 points of damage. Okay, good hit. It, it slams right into the head of this thing and immediately like looks in your general direction, but does not see you. Um, but it does see... Um... Okay, it d gotcha. Not the right type of uh, perception I thought I had, but okay, that's fine. Um, all right, well, that is your turn. You do have a bonus action, but it, you could use your bonus action to hide again because it's now, it now has an idea of your general like general location. It just does not. Yeah, I'm going to hide. Okay, bonus action. I just roll a stealth check with advantage. Twenty-four. Yeah, you're good. All right, that is your turn. Um, it is now uh, the injured mage hunter's turn. It's going to, which by the way, this one would have. Well, it would have dashed, but it's fine. It didn't dash. Um. Um, it's going to. Go after the primary one of the primary targets. So it's just going to full dash 80 feet across and get right up there in your guys' grill. Um, going it seems like it's going after Ornthalist. Um, uh, it will bonus action because it does have those apparently. It does does it? No, it doesn't. Never mind. No, it does. Bonus action. Uh, it will bonus action. Okay, uh, it's not going to bonus action. That's just a it's a it's a shift form and it's already shifted. Um, okay, uh, then that is its turn. It's now Alan's turn. Alan is going to realize everyone's hurt and he's just going to go ahead. <coughs> um, he's going to go ahead and cast mass cure wounds. Um, there he is. Come on, Helen. I need, I need dice rolls, buddy. Where are they? All right. Uh, that's a five spell. He'll go ahead and cast it at fifth level. Um. So, uh, Weaver, you get twenty-five points of healing. Um, Alan's going to give himself 25 points of healing. Uh, Ori, you would get 25 points of healing. Um, I believe it's, is it five or six? No, it's your wounds. You know, I, I, I feel like I cast this every, every, uh, every session, but it's fine. Six creatures. Uh, is anybody else injured? Not me. Just emotionally. Gotcha. I downstairs i don't believe i am okay um and alara is fine okay so he's just gonna dump one more into himself and then one more into each one e another one of you so you got each weaver and or you get another 25 mm, here we go um So that will be his action. He's going to bonus action um, Wild Shape into. Uh, we'll grab Alan and drag him up here just for now. And we will replace him with a big swirling piece of fire. Because he can do that. 
Uh, and he's going to use his movement to go 30 feet, 35 feet, because of Fire Elemental. And uh, actually, let me go 30 feet and go there, just to be on the other side of it. And that will be Alan's turn. Zane, what do you want to do? I'm just going to uh, step off to the side down here a little bit and, uh, you know, blap, blap. And shoot him. Close bastard. Yep. All right. Roll for an attack. Uh, you are proficient with firearms, so. 19. 19 to hit. Does hit. I'm just going to roll the other attacks. I'm going to shoot twice, so. 10 would miss. 10 would miss. Okay, so I'll just roll this one. Then. Let's see what the dice is here thrown. Uh, 1d4 plus 3. Six damage. On the first one, okay. <clears throat> Piercing, by the way, if that matters. It doesn't, but thanks for letting me know. Um, and I'm going to give myself a little defensive field and uh, call it a day. Okay. Um, Alright, that is the end of your turn. It's now this Mage Hunter's turn. It's going to 1, 10, 20, 30. It's going to use its action to... Uh, no, you can make it part of its movement, so, so it'll have to make a uh, acrobatics check since that's only a 10 foot. What is this acrobatics? Um, so it's just his dex, which is not great, but... Um, yeah, okay. So, you see this thing go full sprinting, jump across, and then just full ass, like, hoof ass to right there, and then stop. Uh, and uh, it's turn, it's now uh, Celica's turn, which I believe I can just rename this real quick. Celica. Save. Okay, there we go. Um... <clears throat> Celica is going to see this cr giant, crazy fucking mage hunter. He knows exactly what these are. And he's going to... Oh, shit! And he's going to back up really quickly uh, out of uh, out of panic. And he is going to cast... Um, yeah. <clears throat> he's going to look at this thing and he's going to say... Hey, you need to die. And he's going to reach back and he's going to cast Blight on it. Uh, Blight is... Okay, 88. It's 41. It's a constitution saving throw for them. That is a uh, con, con, con. Is plus 3. It's a 15. So that fails. So it takes 41 points of necrotic damage. And it is looking very hurt now. Um, Celica's then going to back up behind Ornthalus. And that will be his turn. It is now that Mage Hunter's turn. It's going to spider climb over this rock, jump down, and full sprint. Which will get him right to the other side of Alan. Um, and that will be its turn. It is now Alara's turn. Alara's going to see this one uh, in particular getting uh, really hurt, and she's going to... Uh... Um...
she is going to cast um yeah that sounds like fun infestation uh on this creature it needs to make a con save that's a natural one so it fails and then at her level it does Um, that's, uh, I, that'll do it. She reaches out and you see just this plague, uh, like this wrapping around of insects, just like dig down and fester into the scales of this creature and it drops dead on the ground and it is gone. Beautiful. Um, Alara is then going to get as close as she can to Vivra and she's going to sit there and hope that no none of these creepy things come towards her. God, it's one character after another that I play uh, on the initiative. Uh, Ornthalus is going to be... He's going to... He, his his thought process is simple. These things these things are coming after him, so he's going to incinerate one. Um, he's going to look at his book. It'll come flying out of his satchel, floating in the air. He's going to twist it in front of him, and he's going to go ahead and cast. Um, he's going to look at the one that's circling uh, Alan. And he's going to point and cast Finger of Death at it. Um, which is a constitution saving throw. Which it succeeds. But that's fine. That's 78 plus uh, 30. It's a 55 points of necrotic damage, and it's that one's really hurt all of a sudden. Uh, that's the end of Ornthalus' turn. He is going to back up. Actually, he's going to back up a little bit closer to you. Beep, it's your turn. Finally, out of back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back bullshit from me. All right. Um, do I see anyone nearby that needs a healing? Everyone seems pretty all right now that Alan launched that, that big healing spell. Okay. Um, mm. I could use a bit more. Oh. Uh, well, I might be able to... I don't know if I can... Remember. Oh, they change. They change a few things. Hold on. Beach. Beach. So, reminder, Ori is 40 feet up on this yeah. cliff. Just say so where we're... So, it's 80 feet in total. 80, 80 feet in total, yeah. Okay. So, 65 if you angle it. 65 feet. <laughs> I was just about to do the theorem, math. Right. <laughs> Listen, my brain's not my brain's not uh, c committed to the Pythagorean theorem tonight. All right. Here. Got um, fucking geometry nowadays. This is bullshit. Did I fail geometry in high school? So you know, you know how it is. Well, well, I didn't do, fail. I just, eh. I'll math. do. Um, I'll cast a mirror image on myself. Okay. So uh, a bunch. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, is it three up to three, or is it a three three duplicates of yourself? So three, yeah, three okay. others. So yeah, three other beeps just come flying out of him. It's a cacophony. Cacophony of beeps. <laughs> An orchestra, one would say. Beep in the um, back of your head, you hear speech, speech, speech. <laughs> Let me look at one thing. Okay. That was your action. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do oh, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to do mental math to see how far I can move. Actually, you know what? Um, I'm gonna stay in my nice little protected position. Okay. Uh, do you want to uh, inspire? Uh, I'll do the bardic. In yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll do a bardic inspiration for Zane. Okay. Zane, you get a D10 nope. now? A level 10? D10? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a D10. Sweet. 
Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, dial up. It would be dial up. You're right. <laughs> you are hey, wrong. Messenger behind you. Uh, it is uh, Vlivra's turn. Alrighty. Um, I am because Alan went to um, uh, uh, Fire Elemental. I'm going to kind of assume that I'm at least reasonably okay with putting fire by him. Um, so I will go ahead and just do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Is that actually right? Oh, that didn't draw any at all, did it? You're 30. Oh, because it's trying to draw straight lines. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to... Hang on. Let me beat those stupid lines and then actually... Um... We're just going to free things. I'm going to go ahead and cast a good old-fashioned... Um... Oh, not on the spells page. That would be why I can't see it. Good old-fashioned, um... Wall of fire. Okay. And it's going to be facing outwards, I assume? Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. Alright. Deck save. That's a natural two. So, uh, yeah, it fails. <laughs> and Alan is okay. unaffected so by the fire. Um, so six... Well, he's also not in it. In I, it, I yeah. put it right in front of him. Yeah, um, 16. So it's, uh... Oof. Oof. It's it's looking almost dead. <laughs> Talking, like, pennies here. But anything else Weber wants to do? Um... I'm just gonna go ahead and take a... No. Because Alara's right behind me. I was gonna take a half step forward, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna stay here. Okay. Um, all right. It is uh, now this Mage Hunter's turn. It's going to blindly run towards Ori and confront him. Um, and that will be its turn. It is now this Mage Hunter's turn. It is also going to run forward um, 80 feet. And that will also be its turn because they don't have bonus actions that are meaningful. Um, Ori. What's that red line for? That's the wall of fire. Uh, my wall of fire. Uh, I'm going to swing my axe. The bad news is though. Uh, 25. That hits. Uh, 40 damage. Does Radiant do anything different? Nope. Okay. So 40? Oh, fuck. Yep. Okay. Big hit. Yeah, it. And extra attack. Twenty-four. Twenty-four hits. Got my Warhammer dice. Hell yeah. Uh, forty again. Forty again. It is uh, still up. Glaive swing. All right. Uh, twenty-eight. Yeah. Oh, cool. 
36. Yeah, it just crumples on, on your glaive hit and falls at your feet and actually uh, flops down enough to where it's starting to, it, like, halfway falls down this cliff. But it, it is gone. Can I kick it down as I walk by? Sure. I'll, I'll allow a little, a little tap as a free action. All right. And that'll be it. Okay. Uh, Thaddeus, it's your turn. You can see through this opaque wall of flames. You're It's hot, but you're not getting burned by it. Okay. Um, this one. Right. Hmm. I have to do it. Ah. Okay, the one that's got the red line. If, if I move over here, mm -hmm. can I get a sneak attack on that? Uh, yes, because it is engaged with uh, with Alan. So, and you are invisible currently. You are not. A, you're not a, a spellcaster. So yeah, it has no idea where you are. Uh, the first, uh, oh yeah, uh, 17 hits, 13 does not, but 17 hits and 24 Ray Pierre damage. Um, no, that's that, the damage. That's, uh, oh, that's the hit. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. 24. Yeah, it hits. Yeah, that's fine. Well, you were rolling with advantage anyways, because you're sneak attacking. So I'll take oh, the first okay. one. So yeah, 17 hits. Um, and then sneak attack. Ooh. 61 Hashtag rogues, man <laughs> uh, 31 points of damage Yeah, the thing is Dead, it falls down and starts just getting Enveloped by the flame Incinerating it as you go in and stab Really really quickly And it's just, it's just enough To bring that thing down um, Okay uh, Do you want to, you have a bonus action still If you want to Hide, what do you want to do? Um, hide, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, you hide. That is your turn. So you're going to hide behind the wall of flames and just with your invisibility cloak and just hope that uh, you don't see it. Go and roll a, a, a stealth check with advantage. Uh, I'll take the first one. Uh, you can feel the watchful gaze, even though they, you don't see any discernible eyes from this one, it is staring right at you. Over the 25? You're not rule, ruling, oh wait, yeah, sorry, cloak of visibility, yeah, 25, yeah, you're good. You told me to roll with advantage. I'm sorry, I, I'm used to you double rolling, I'm, I apologize. Um, okay. I'm sober. Fair. Um, okay, it's Alan's turn. Um, Alan is going to see, uh, this one, and he's got, um, he's got 35 feet, which will bring him to right here. Um, and then he's going to, you're going to see... Which, you see him just roll through your wall of flame, no problem. Um, and he's going to... Uh, he's actually going to dash because he doesn't have the ability to like chuck fire or anything. He's just going to get up in this thing's face. Uh, that's Alan's turn. Zane, it's your turn. magic yes it's your Sorry. turn oh no um shit i can't reach anybody um 
Let me see what I have available to potentially reach somebody. Um, if Zane starts running towards the fire, um, I will drop it, but even no, if that costs me I, a reaction. I can do this instead. I think I can reach that. Let me... I need a link. Oh, perfect. I'll just toll the dead on the guy Alan's engaged with. All right, that's a uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. what type of saving throw? Uh, I got. Ask me what level. It's a cantrip. Uh, it's a saving throw. Yeah, but uh, wisdom save. Okay. Wisdom, I believe. And yep. Spell save DC. Uh, it. That's a sixteen. Ah, oh, so it just fails. So it's uh for you it's two D twelve. Ten, ten points. Cool. It, you guys don't hear it, but you just see like this like this outline of a bell just start to form behind it and like bong once and like go go back and forth and then disappear and you just you clearly see the um the creature starting to react negatively to that. Um, okay, that is the end of your turn. And this is in case you want a bonus action and or uh, nope, that's all I got. Move. Okay. Um, may, it's this this major hunter's turn. It's going to do a full range of multi attacks, which was the first one that's actually been able to attack. Um, since these things have no range to speak of. All right, cool. Um, so it is going to... Uh, it's going to make two claw attacks on Alan. That's a... Uh, yeah, that'll hit Alan. Um, that's... Okay, that's that's four. That's a uh, twenty points of slashing damage on that one, and then nineteen points of slashing damage on the second hit. Um. Okay, so I don't fix that. You just see it cut into his fiery form. Um, does he take any less damage? Continue. Uh, damage immediately uh, piercing and slashing from non magical attacks. Okay. So that would be. I think he does damage back to it because he's on fire. He does. Um, so that is. Two. Um, but he does do an extra fire form, does an extra 1d10 fire damage to anything that physically attacks him. That's cocked. Okay, that does uh, eight, eight points of fire damage onto that thing. Um, except it's going to use its ability as a reaction, consume and destroy. Uh, as Alan's fire flings off of his body, you see, uh, you see this creature start to suck in the flames, the magical energy, and it's going to burst out from the uh, from underneath it right back. At Alan and anybody within a 60 foot radius needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Um, so that would be me, Thaddeus, and say, uh, well, hold on. Oh, I actually. Yep. So I was say, it should be Zane and Thaddeus make a dexterity saving throw. Uh... And Ori. No, uh, it's it, it would, or, yeah. no, it would stay on the ground because that's forty feet up. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 a ground based AOE that travels out in a magical True. burst. Uh, oof, okay. I don't know if Rule Twenty changed this, but Zach, did you see that um, circle I put on the measuring? Yeah. Okay. So the DM can see you measure, yeah. even when you don't have broadcast to others train or put on yeah. the measuring tool. Yeah, so I can, yeah. 
Uh, both are both are fails. Um, so, um, so it absorbs, uh, it, it absorbs that damage, and then. Okay, so you guys both take four points of fire damage as it erupts. Uh, that that little bit of fire damage take uh, that it took. Um, and then they could do this at will every time. Um, okay. Uh, it's now Celica's turn. Celica is going to uh, magic missile this one. So he's going to do it at fourth level. Magic missile. So that's uh, seven missiles. Ten, thirteen... 14, 17, 19. That one takes 19 points of damage. That is, uh, Salika is going to, he's going to see where he's at. So it's Alara's turn. Uh, Alara is going to look at it. Um, how far away? does this spell have to be i think it's 60 feet yeah it's 60 feet um oh god i didn't mean to do that uh line so uh, alara is going to walk forward a full 5 10 15 20 25 30 because she can move 30 now and she's going to reach out and cast blight on that one so that's another I need to make it con save which it fails because these things are not very constitutionally dense uh, and it does take 44 points of necrotic damage the uh the energy just kind of kind of rips through it, and it looks real injured. Uh, the one, the one right here. Uh, that is the end of its turn. Um, it is now Ornthalus' turn. Ornthalus is going to cast fly on himself, and he's going to fly up, and he's going to go do a full movement, and he's going to technically be above Zane, but we're going to put him right here. Um, and he's going to be flying up in the air. Um, and that will be the end of his turn. Uh, it is now Beep's turn. All right. Um, let's see how far I can go. Zach, I've been forgetting my um, feature that where the things are that are dead. Um, the hang on, let me actually click on the feature. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's right. I forgot about that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Cauterizing flames. All right, and. Hmm. How far can I go? Oh shit, that might... Okay, I gotta... I know where they died at, so... We'll just uh, grab a little... So they died right here. Uh, right here. And right here. So... Not quite in range. Okay. Um. Okay. Can I um? Can I cast shatter on the uh, fire elemental? That's Alan. Oh, that's Alan. <laughs> Lord. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Oh, actually, none of those would uh, have lit because I was more than thirty feet away from them. Well, never mind. then I don't really think there's anything I can do. Um, does anyone need healing? Doesn't look like it. Everyone's kind of. Okay. I'm um, good. I'm scratched, but. 
Fine. You can do it if you want to do something. I mean, I get what I could do, actually. Hold on. I forgot. I have this. Um, I'll do Psychic Lance on the, uh, the Mage Hunter. Which one? The one by Alan. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, what, what is that? What is that roll? Is that a intelligence save or a wisdom save? Uh, I'll play it. What is a intelligence intelligence save? Oh, this should go great for them. That's a natural one. Cool. All right. So. Twenty-four. Uh, <laughs> Alan and his, uh, in his elemental form, and anybody watching that one just see it crumple. Its head, you see its head start to like bulge and bubble and just kind of pop and fall down because that was enough to kill it. Um. By the way, that was a perfectly average roll. Yeah. I. <laughs> I know. It's kind of crazy. I saw that. Um, okay. Anything else Beep wants to do? Uh, I'll do... Uh, could I could I reach a Bardic Inspiration up to Ori? That's a far... I know. Yeah, I, know I would say probably not. Then... I Then probably no. Okay. Uh, Vuivra. Wall Flame still up. Uh, this one's dead, which I'll, it will bring it downwards. The only thing left is up here. You see Ornthal is starting to fly up, and he's kind of, like, pointing at it. Yep. Um, there's not really anything I can do. I'll go ahead and drop the Wall of Fire, um, which I don't think I can anymore, because you drew it. You redrew it. Um, yeah, I'll get rid of it. No, I'll keep And I guess I'll go ahead and no, I don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to hold on to um I'm going to hold my action to polymorph the mage hunter if it gets asked to Ori or survives the round basically. Okay, so poly polymorph if it survives the round. Gotcha. I can do that. If if uh... it if it's yeah, down on our level if it gets near the rest of our casters, basically. Okay, sounds good. Um, well, then top of the top of the initiative, it is this one. It's going to wander up and it's going to try to stick Ori with its tail. Um, it's going to stick you, and then it's going to attempt to grapple you. So that's a that's a natural twenty on the tail. Um, which is oh, not that awful, um, but it is doubled, so incoming. Silvery barbs. <laughs> um, that is 15 plus 27. 27 times 2 is a 54 plus 4. So, uh, 58 points of piercing damage. And Ouch. I'm going to need you to make a uh, dexterity saving throw. Or, sorry, no, 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 not dex save. We're grappling. So, make a uh, make an athletics check. Or, no. I make an athletics check. You make an acrobatics check. According to this, because it's a dex based creature. But if it's a grapple, I thought you get the choice between athletics or acrobatics. 
Uh, yeah, very clear. Very clear says uh, when gra when grappling the mate, uh, the mage hunter att attempts to hold on to the creature with an actual athletics check, and the creature attempts to get away with an acrobatics check. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I rolled like shit. What did you roll? Uh, twenty three. Twenty three. Okay, yeah, you beat the grapple. Um, so yeah, it, it stabs into you and then immediately starts to like wrap around like a snake around your body, but you're able to just kind of like grab it and like duck out of the way. No problem. Um, that is its action. It's, um, that is, that's it. That's all I can do. Um, so Ori. All right. Time to swing. I would like to remind you that you have already used your action surge. Yeah, I know. All right. Just making sure. Because I, I, I yeah, you, you went through combat prior. Oh, so out of superiority die. Okay. Remember that. <clears throat> nat for Prani, I get to use the Christmas. Oh, there, I will use my Nat twenty for my uh, for Christmas. Sorry, it's expired. The oh. oh, fuck. Uh, twenty nine. Twenty nine hits. And forty one. Forty one? Okay. Damage. Then extra attack. Cocked. Uh twenty five. Twenty five hits? Forty. Forty? It's still just barely up. Alright. Then bonus X. Okay. Or no uh, glaive. Sorry. Yep. Uh, it's a nineteen, so it's a crit. Alright. So it dies, understood. <laughs> Oral damage. If you want. It if you want to, it's it's dead. It has four HP left. So how are you doing? Uh, 56. Yeah, it's very dead. Uh, as dead as dead could be. Uber dead. Uh. Alright. As we come down to the end of combat, you see all these creatures fall over. Well, they've already been followed over. In this case, uh, Ori, uh, I guess, how would you have killed this creature as it was a sticking you with its tail and doing a lot of damage to you? Uh, I'm going to stab my glaive into it and then punch in the face a lot. <laughs> okay. As you go to punch in the face, you notice it's not actual... It's not a animal. It's not a creature. As you punch more and more, you feel mechanical drives starting to malfunction. You feel almost like an exoskeleton, but you're punching through and it's like you're hitting metal. And you look and it's like a weird keratin built cog system, like clockwork system built inside of this creature. And you look at it, it's just, it's really odd. And as you beat it to where it's no longer moving, everyone hears a tick, like a clock, moving a hand. And all of you hear in your head, except for Elka, trial cleared. Moving on to next step. Uh, as you hear that, Elka. You have finished yep. your trial, except you only hear the affirmations of one. Claim your prize. You walk forward, and on the other side of this bridge, 
is a gateway into a uh, what looks to be a room laid with gold and silver. Um, I'll walk towards it and then uh, also asking, I guess, to know what in particular and be like, I'm looking for the Cordeorum, not a pile of treasure. But the pile of treasure is nice. And then I guess I'll like... You hear nothing. <laughs> I'm going to stand at like the threshold, I guess. Okay. It's... And like... It's bright. Go ahead. It's shiny. Okay. That's it. Is there anything else like outside that would like that I would see? Make a perception check. Oh, nat twenty. <laughs> oh. oh. To it for a total of. Oh, um perception. 25. 25. That's, that was the DC. Uh, you look in and you peer through and the golden and silver room you blink your eyes and it's not that. It's it's stone. It's You look at the ground, it's a pit. It's nothing. And then you look over to your left and standing there in a single room is a stone pillar with a single treasure chest standing on top of it. Standing at the base of this treasure chest is what looks to be a small part of a blade resting huh. next to the treasure I chest. I know what that is. Uh, I will walk over warily, like, cautiously, okay. considering, you know, the last thing that I just did. And uh, I'm going to pull out one of my rapiers and kind of, like, touch the chest and the, the blade piece to just make sure that they're, like... They're real. Okay. Yeah, you feel them. They're... It's very clearly wood you're stabbing into. It's it's a it's a blade. You hear it. You feel the ting of metal it's on metal. Mimic. God, don't do that to me. Uh, so I'll grab. I guess I'll uh, I'll like kind of squat down and like look at the blade and uh, pull out the like broken one that the broken sword I have and kind of see if it matches up. It's as perfect of a match as it could be, as you hold it up, and as you go to it, go look. You feel lighter. You feel not alone, but it's not a heavy burden. It's a light burden. And you look around and you see no one, even with a natural 20 passive or the natural 20 perception. It's familiar. It's, it's a weird, familiar feeling. It almost feels nice, warm. Someone something deemed it deemed you worthy of finding this and as you go to match the blade you feel like a magnet starting to pull towards the center part blade and then the hilt and the the tip part of the blade shoot out of your hand and cling on to the center part of the blade and start to, you see the blade start to mend itself. You see the metal heat up briefly and reattach itself. And standing in front of, sitting in front of you is a short sword. Uh, one that is adorned with many elvish ruins. Uh, elvish runes, sorry. Um, a bluish, almost uh, cyan blue colored blade uh, with a intense plat platinum edge on each side of the blade. 
Uh, the hilt is pure gold uh, inlaid with all sorts of gems that reflect the blue of the blade. Uh, in your mind, you immediately hear, I have found a new home, it seems. It's been about, it's about damn time. Uh, probably 1,500 years or so. I'm going to blink a second and just be like, do you have a name? I did. Would you like you to hear remember? it? No, I remember it. But generally people are allowed to rename their blades if they want. I believe that a blade as old as you probably has seen many battles and deserves to keep the name they have. Unless, of course, you wish to rename yourself. Oh, no, I, 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 I quite like the one that uh, I had. My name is the Starblade, Calypso. Good to meet you, little Miss Fairy. Hi. Uh, very good to meet you, Calypso. Uh, is it okay if I pick you up and bring you with me? Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? I'll reach out and, uh, and grab, and grab the sword, I guess. Uh, your entire body explodes. I'm kidding. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Uh, what does happen is you reach down and immediately you feel... It's strange. As you grab the blade, it feels familiar. You feel like somebody, something you know deep down has wielded this blade before. And you just can't put your finger on it. And as you grab the blade, you feel your dragon scales start to frill up and react to the power of the blade. And you start to see the scales slowly remove themselves from your arm and go down only to your wrist. And now there's just barely any scales along your hand, the top of your hand and your wrist. And then she says, that nasty curse is really eating away at you, wasn't it? Well, looks like I have the ability to get, a, get rid of it. I'm sorry, did you say curse? Yeah, it's the dragon's curse. Have you never heard of it? No. Really? I... Uh, there's a there's a there's a girl from you're from Arun. You should have heard the folk tales. Uh, um, her name was uh, oh, uh Edna. She she was once afflict, inflicted with this curse and she turned fully into a dragon. That's what I, that was the path you were heading on. I know Edna and my brother. My brother is he has the same thing. Oh well. You better figure out how to get the curse out of him or he's going to turn into a dragon by the looks of it. And Edna's only a dragon sometimes. Is that part of the curse? Well, once you fully turn into a dragon, you could turn into a humanoid for a certain amount of time per day. Uh, you would gain most powers of a dragon, but your entire anatomy changes into that of your, your dragon. And for your case, looks to be a... Some sort of metallic dragon. Which isn't a bad thing if you wanted to be a dragon. But if you don't want to be a dragon, you better let me hang around. I'm, I'm not sure being a dragon would be any better or worse than my current self, but... Uh, you doubt yourself. We'll just, Why is that? No, no, I just... Uh... Some people in my family think I am worthless, and I'm getting better at understanding that I'm not, and I know that I'm not. I just have to remember that a lot. But I don't think being a dragon would be any better than who I am right now. Okay. So. Well, if you found that, ab that out about yourself, then you're more than worthy to wield me. Glad to have you as a friend, Elka. 
And uh, Very excited to find a, a a new friend too. Oh, if I were you, I'd open up that chest behind behind where I was laying. There might be something in there worth your while. Well, that was definitely next. Uh, so I'll stand up and uh, find a place to uh, like hang my new uh, sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'll uh, see if I can pop that chest open. It's a mimic. No, um, you're you 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 get bit. You're dead. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, um, I'm gonna cast uh, melt <laughs> minute meteors. I just blow open the chest. And destroy the gem inside? Wow. Um, okay, but you go to open the chest. It's unlocked. All right, I'll, I'll pop it open. You pop it open, and the only thing inside the chest is a scroll. Okay, I guess I'll grab it and open it up, see if I can read it. It is in, uh, it is in Sylvan, which you can read, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah, you yeah. can read Sylvan. Yes. It says in Sylvan, if you if you are the one that has rejoined Calypso to herself, congratulations, you've inherited a very very good weapon. Unfortunately, I was unable to continue wielding it, or wielding her. Sorry. Uh, since my own magical powers were being drawn out, were we drawn, were being drawn out of me into her. I had I had to leave her here. And break her apart so that way no one else would be able to wield her, since her power is one of the greats. Do be careful. If you are a magic wielder, she drains you pretty quickly. She'd probably be better off with someone who doesn't have magic. So hopefully that's you. Lucky me. And signed. Uh, Ashera Burning Heart. I'm assuming I would recognize that name. Would you? Roll history check. Seventeen. Seventeen. You've heard bits and pieces of a person named Ashera Burning Heart. Ashera Burning Heart is your great, 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 which is eleven greats, so you can write it down. Uh grandfather. Uh who was known as a warrior of the fracture. Who who was the last wielder of Calypso. The star, uh, the the sword of stars. Um, as you acquaint yourself, you hear in your head, "There's someone behind you, Elka." Uh, I will turn around quickly and draw my new blade, Calypso. You see a cloaked figure, dark hood, over over their face, and all you hear from underneath that cloak is Elka? We're going to end right there. Come on. Because it's uh, late and I have to go out and take care of kitties. <laughs> Plus, I like being an asshole sometimes and leave you on a cliffhanger. So, anyways, uh, thanks for playing. I'll be right back. Let's get... Uh... Rid of the ambience. Ambience. <laughs> I just saw that middle finger. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. God. Please. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll get back to you. We'll be back live Next week, Sunday, uh, I'm struggling to get these fucking Baldur's Gate episodes out. I, I've been so busy. I'm, I'm, I'm always busy, but I'm very busy right now. Um, but yeah, 
thank you for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I expect to see this out on time tomorrow and maybe a Baldur Gate 3 uh, episode out this week. And then I might just do one a week from then on just because I'm... I, I got off the schedule and I couldn't get back on it. It's the hardest thing in the world. But anyways, I appreciate all of you. We're going to go ahead and end tonight. And uh, I will see all of you hopefully next week. And uh, keep your eye out for some uh, information about some certain things that could be coming soon. Uh, hopefully that will be out this week, if not next week. But I'll remind you next week if it is not out by this week. I have no direct date for the teaser, but something cool that I've been working on for a very long time. So anyways, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful night and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.